Blog Talk Radio. already. Oh my God, we're about to go into March. Welcome to the Tarot Today radio show here on the Psychic Talk Network. I'm Dax Carlisle, coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. And I I am a tarot advisor, numerologist, and professional hypnotist. And here she is, my fabulous co-host. She is the vice president for certification for the Tarot Guild. Crystal Keeper, Rock Hound, Crystal Ricky Master, and Tarot Master Mary Brown. Hey, Mary. Yes. Hey, how are you? Happy Hello. Saturday, everybody. Woohoo! It's Yay. Leap Day. Happy Leap Day. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is Leap Day. I completely forgot it was Leap Year, but hey, I mean, you're you're lucky that I know that it's Saturday, so I, I made it on the, to the radio <laughs> show. Because all the days just blend together. In fact, uh, I think that contributes. I think that's why time just seems, you know, the last few years, time just seems like it's blaring by. Like, I mean, it's March. I know. What's up with that? Almost. Didn't we just have New Year's? I know, I know. I think it's a holiday kind of thing where you you have, what it feels like is like a, a couple months of holidays where you're just celebrating, 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 and then you're like, okay, the new year, I can relax, and then it just, like, psh, flies by. Yeah. But I don't know. You know, is time moving quicker or are we moving slower? You know, <laughs> that's what I wonder. <laughs> Sometimes and, I feel like I'm moving it, slower. <laughs> and what does it mean when there's when there's a leap year? I mean – Think about that. Okay, the 29th, so 2 plus 9 is 11. That's the master illuminator number. So every year that there's leap year, every four years, and like people that are born on a leap year, you know, born on the 29th of February, on, you know, leap day, born on leap day, let's just say it that way, um, they're always a master number 11. Have you ever – thought about that i mean there are two also because one plus one reduces to two right so life path two but when you get a master number before the final reduction and when you're looking at someone's life path um that's significant Mm. you want to you want to pay attention to that so they're really here for a higher purpose they're supposed to be teaching you know they're supposed to be illuminating the rest of us what do you think of that well what i think of it I'll tell you, I, you know, my father, who was 100% Irish and, you know, 100% screw up, <laughs> he, he was a leap day baby. And um, so it makes me really think about what happens when somebody works the other side of that. You know, everything that they're supposed to be doing, supposed to be illuminating us. What if it's like they go dark, you know, because that was my dad. Right. <laughs> you know, so I, and, and and so I think the, it's that interesting. That, you know, people, you know, I explain to people what their numerology chart means. And, of course, it's not just the life path number. It's nine numbers. And, it, you know, it's like a natal chart in uh, astrology. You just You don't just look at the sun sign. You have to look at the whole chart. Well, it's the same thing with numerology. 
Um, but when I explain a lot of this to people, they, they either go, oh, man, that is so dead on. That is so me. Or it's completely the opposite. It's like I am 180 degrees uh, different from that, and it's like, well, yeah, there's two coin, two sides to the error. Every two coin, sides. you know, you're 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 working the negative energy. You know, you're you're paddling upstream, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's it's amazing. You know, down in um, you know, south of here, but still in Texas, they have a town where there was just like a ton of. Uh, leap day babies born, you know, like I guess generation after generation. So what they do now is every four years on leap day, they have a four day celebration and people from all over the world come. They're the leapsters. So shout out to the leapsters. (laughs) Everyone born on the 29th. And I I think it's, you know, there's something magical about it to me. You know, I I think there's something unusual and I think it's something that's either, you know, either the person has like this real, you know, they are the master illuminator. They do these wonderful things and they have kind of a charmed life or they're so bad. It's like the opposite of all of that, you know, and there's bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. But it's funny, you know, because in the fifth century in, in Ireland, right, they started a tradition um, that where women could propose to men on leap day and it's kind of a funny oh, wow. story because because at that time supposedly what happened and who knows right you know we weren't there but supposedly saint bridget of kildare uh it was arguing that women were languishing away waiting for their shy bow to get the nerve to pop the question and so she asked saint patrick to give a day that the women might be able to propose themselves and finally um, they settled on Leap Day, and supposedly St. Bridget then immediately proposed to St. Patrick, and who knows if that really happened. Obviously, it didn't, but there's all these kind of cool traditions around the world that, like, about this idea of women being able to propose to men. Now, of course, this is modern times. I can do that anyway, but they would have all of these different things, like in Denmark, if uh, – the woman proposed and the man turned her down, um, he was supposed to give her 12 pairs of gloves, you know, to hide the horror of not having an engagement ring, right? (laughs) I mean, they're kind of funny. And in Finland, um, you know, they had to give enough fabric to make a skirt. and, And, you know, but in some countries in Greece and Scotland and Germany, Leap Day was considered, like, unlucky, unlucky for love and in Scotland especially it was supposed to uh you know those born on leap day would live a life of suffering and it was a bad year for livestock and uh in Germany it was just like it's a leap year it's going to be cold (laughs) so it's kind of funny that there's all these kind of you know wild ideas about the idea of it being like an unusual um thing happening in our calendar and only happening every four years, but I think it's so fascinating, Dex, get this, right, that you and I, we weren't even thinking about leap day, leap year, any of that stuff, right, when we came up for today's uh, psychic spin topic, okay, this idea of this repeating signal, and here it is, we're actually going to talk about this on leap day in a leap year, which is its own sort of repeating thing, you know, every four years, isn't that weird? Well, well, that's right. And not only that, uh, you know, it being the 29th, the Master Illuminator Day, uh, it, it's just perfect that we're going to be talking about that. Yeah, I think it's synchronicity. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just think when it, when it's something that's not all the time, not common – uh, like leap day in the calendar, things like that, you know, that only happen infrequently, uh, you know, even things like Mercury retrograde. Um, I think we ascribe meaning and, you know, mm-hmm. you get all these different traditions, um, all these different mythologies, and we ascribe meaning to it when there's no, nothing there really. 
<laughs> you know, there's a lot of this stuff. Absolutely. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to say. I think, you know, we have that kind of inherent thing where we're, you know, we yeah. we want the world to make sense. We we want right. things to have meaning. And so we we sometimes come up with some wild ideas <laughs> about but you what, know what's that, fascinating? what it does mean. Hmm. But, you, but you know what's fascinating also? It's like, you know, what, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, our ascribing meaning or attaching meaning or ideas or, or myths to certain things in and of itself creates that. In other words, it makes it happen. It, it, it gives it meaning then. When, even if there was nothing there originally, it, we give it meaning simply by our focus, attention, ideas, um, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. And yeah. so we're we're actually creating that. So it does have meaning, right? Absolutely. I think so. Awesome. <laughs> and it's interesting, too, because this... Um, this fast radio burst, that repeating signal that we're going to be talking about, it goes through four day, four day cycles of regular activity, and then goes through a twelve day period of silence. And so I thought the the idea of four day cycles, leap year every four years. I'm like, man, there's like I don't know, you know, maybe maybe it means nothing, right? Maybe you know it's just a coincidence if you believe there are just coincidences. I myself tend to think there's something to it. <laughs> yes, and that's what I love about our psychic spin segment is uh, when there's topics in the news or things on our collective minds. You know, um, like I, I guess the big thing now is the coronavirus, and um, you know maybe we'll hit that with a psychic spin soon. And, but things that are in the news, you know, we can uh, do our psychic spin segment. And if you're new to the show and are not familiar with that, uh, it's where, you know, we take a look at current events, things in the news. Uh, and, you know, we, we can put a psychic spin on it because we can use numerology and intuition, uh, tarot cards, oracle cards, uh, you know, a, a whole uh, a pendulum. I mean, you name it. You know, we we can use a whole bunch of different tools and and uh, and skills to take a look at something, whereas everybody else has to just speculate. You know, the talking heads on the news programs, you know, can just talk and talk and talk and speculate, speculate, speculate. You know, but we can actually take a look, put a psychic yeah. spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, and so this was a really good one. You're the one that noticed this in the news. I didn't even notice this, uh, and then and then as soon, of course, as soon as you told me, then I start seeing it everywhere. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, do you want to tell folks about? But oh, before we go there, yeah, uh, we've mm-hmm. been having such a great time chatting here, Mary. I completely forgot to mention we are a live call-in show. You you can call us on the phone. 714-816-4628 if you're listening live. And you can chat with us and you can ask us uh, questions about Reiki and energy healing and angels and tarot and numerology and oracle cards and, I mean, hypnosis. We have everything covered between Mary and I. And you can also call in for uh, a mini tarot reading. We'd love to do that with you. Let me give you the phone number again. It's 714-816-4628. Press the number one when you get through. So as soon as you get through, if you press one on your dial pad, that lets us know you want to be live on air. It puts you in the queue, and the call is in the order that they come in. We also have the chat room open on the Tarot Guild website. Our Friday and Saturday shows are sponsored by the Tarot Guild, now in our 16th year. You can go over to thetarotguild.com, and it's free to join our website. It's not just an ordinary website, though, folks. It's a a social networking uh, 
community website so it has all the features like the big social media platforms like Facebook. It, it's like Facebook for tarot. It has all that, and it's free to join. So you can just go over to thetarotguild.com, and uh, if you click on chat in the navigation bar or simply type in your browser, thetarotguild.com slash chat, it's going to take you to our chat room. You can pop in there, and you can comment on the show. You can ask questions. You can even ask for a mini reading right there from the chat room. But, of course, we would prefer to talk to you live on air on the phone, so give us a call, 714-816-4628. Remember to press 1 on your dial pad. We'd love to to chat with you. Um, before we do the mysterious signals from deep space, we have somebody that's been holding on for a half hour. Do, do you want to take a phone call real yeah. quick, and then we'll do the psychic spin? Let's do it. Awesome sauce. Okay, so it looks like area code 267. Hello, caller. Are you there? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Donna. I'm calling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And, hi, Donna. Um, uh, hi. I was born in um, Philadelphia. Oh, well, wow. Wow. It's, it's a great city. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, um, I where I've been working seven years now, um, it's a hospital. I've been doing housekeeping. Um, there's like stuff going on around me. Um, they stop you if they see you sitting. They call it not uh, obeying the rules, but it's it's really ridiculous. Could you tell me what you see around it? Like I've gotten right up. I'm 57 years old, and I've gotten so many times, um, and I've been here seven years and never got one except for when this new management is coming in. Mm. Um, And the coworkers, too, are going against each other. Oh, that's not good. Not a good work situation there. Uh, But, uh, Donna, what was it again? What what's the rules? What what did they say that you are breaking or you know what's going on again? Well, like stupid, like um, you can't put your your cart away um in, until quarter after three. So one time I put it away at eight after and got written up for that. And and the. The supervisor, uh, she, I guess the manager gets on her, I, I don't know, and has back to back to back discharges, do this, do this, and it, it, it's just like it's getting to be too much. I'm tired, and I, I, I do want to look somewhere else. I'm going to start, but mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, so what do you want to know? Do you want to know if it's going to get better there? Or do you want us to look at, like, new job opportunities and how that job oh, search is going to go? Uh, what, what, what do you see it, is this about? Is it people just turning on other people, trying to get them in trouble? Like, or um, You know, I, I don't know. About? I'm getting the emperor, and I just – I have the, the – feeling, you know, the the first gut instinct was that, you know, these people just need to get a life. Okay, they're they're you know, they 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 live to control things. You know, um, yes. that that's the situation, you know, and I'm getting all of these cards like the 5 of cups and the 5 of pentacles and things like that. And it's indicating it, it, you know, it's just not a good situation. And then I've got the the two of wands, and uh, he's holding the globe, and he and he's, uh, you know, uh, looking off in the distance. You know that I mean that's if there's a card about you know looking for a, a new job, that's the card. And yeah. after that, we got the uh, the six of wands, literally the success card. So yeah, it, it's saying that look, this is a bad situation. What's going on? It's um, it's personalities. It's 
um, uh, the, the 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 supervisors, you know, flexing their control. They they want to micromanage. I, I mean, come on, the difference between putting something away uh, eight minutes after the hour versus fifteen minutes after the hour that is just ludicrous. So when when it's that bad, that means that it's micromanaging. And yes, you it's bad. Uh, no, you're not. You're never going to change these people. I'm sorry. You know, uh, I mean. If they were your subordinates, you might be able to counsel them and work on it, you know, but they are the people in charge. They're going to do it their way, period, you know. And, yeah, you know, uh, some of us are too seasoned to deal with this kind of stuff. I feel I, I feel you there, Donna. And so, yeah, the cards are strongly indicating that you, you definitely should be looking for – uh, a different place to work. My God, you have a lifetime of experience, not just, you know, what you've been doing lately and, and uh, you know, necessarily the, exactly the same kind of work, but you have all this other uh, life experience that you that's valuable and that you can um, find a much better working situation. And if you shift your focus to that, then we've got the six of ones. We've got uh, the success card showing up. Let's see what Mary's getting. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, so what What I'm getting is really interesting. It's, it's really just saying, you know, in a nutshell, that you're going to be happier elsewhere. Um, also, the other thing that, that comes up here is kind of a time frame of when might be the best time to transition into a new job. And it's pointing to the time of Leo. So that is like um, July, August time frame. Um, the Ten of Cups comes up at the, in the outcome, you know, if you choose to look elsewhere. And that's a card of like really, you know, emotional fulfillment, being happy. Um, again, the other, the, we get the strength card as well. Um, and then the the other thing that comes up is, you know, it's just a question for you to, like, think about is, like, in this current situation there, which I think Dax really, you know, kind of explained pretty well, like, you know, what's what's going on there with the micromanaging and stuff. I want you to also, you know, think about and see what you can do for yourself um, to guard against that kind of stress affecting your health. Because I do feel like it's not a healthy situation. Not that it's just annoying, but wow, it could, you know, that's kind of stress isn't very, very good for us. So there's some things to think about. Right. Like, like I, I, I would like, that's not, this isn't my personality anyway. So it could be mm-hmm. just coming to a mm-hmm. head. Maybe it's a push. Like I, I would like to yeah. um, like get, get dressed every day. And um, rent out apartments, you know, apartment complexes, um, you, you know, showing people apartments and stuff because right. I I had applied for that before and nothing happened. But you know, that was only one time. But I I, I yeah. you know I could do other stuff behind a desk yeah. and yeah, and yeah. and, and as <laughs> you can look at it as. Uh, an opportunity. I mean, th- this is a good time to shift your focus from this situation to how you want it to be. And so you, now you have the luxury of l- looking for not just a better position, but you can really look for something that you really want to do as opposed to just doing whatever. You know, you can really, really put some thought into this you can take out a piece of paper write down all the details of you know what you'd rather be doing where you'd rather be working the type of environment you know how do the coworkers interact how do the supervisors interact you know uh or are you even working in that situation maybe you're working in in a place that's you know really small there's only uh one or two other people you know it's some other kind of situation, you know, or maybe you're running your own business, taking the value that you have and creating value for other people by solving problems for somebody else, you know, and just doing it yourself. This is the time to 
shift the focus. And the more you shift the focus away from the current situation with the with the uh, job you're in now, uh, the more the the less you will draw that in your life, and the more you'll draw in whatever you focus on that you actually want. So it's an opportunity, actually, right now. Well, I hope that helps right. you out, Donna. We got to get going. And Thanks for calling. Appreciate the phone call. Yeah. Okay. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and uh, let us know. You know, let us know uh, how you you got on there and. Uh, if you, you know, get a new a new position, something along those lines, we'd love to hear back. Okay, and so that opens uh, another line at seven one four eight one six four six two eight. You can get into the caller queue. Press number one on your dial pad to get into the into the queue, and uh, we'd be happy to take your call. But before we go back to the phone calls. Uh, we promised to talk about uh, the mysterious signals from deep space. We're going to do a psychic spin segment, and if you missed the beginning of the show, that's the segment where we take a look at something on our collective consciousness, um, on our minds, uh, whether it's you know current events, something in the news, and we put a psychic spin on it because we could pull cards on that, Mary. Yes. Yes, we can. Hey, and speaking of pulling cards, I'm, and... yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm also, uh, okay, I wanted to just mention really, really quick before we before I get into the topic is um, also join our Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group. You know, we post a card of the day there every day, and today's card of the day is from the Guardian Angel Reading Cards by Debbie Malone, and it's the Angel of Grounding. So if you're feeling a little weird on this leap day, uh, get out there, get do some earthing, connect with nature, whatever it is that makes you feel grounded and centered and together. <laughs> and you can find us by going to psychictalk.net forward slash Facebook, or you can look for us on Facebook, uh, Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group. And so on to this mysterious awesome. repeating signal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering what well, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going in two different directions here. My mind is freaking <laughs> out, you know. It, it's yeah, like it's I didn't okay. uh, I I I didn't know that you were going to do the the card of the day right now and it's like, "Oh, well, wait, I got to get my card of the day and numerology out of the way too." So, you know, we already talked about it being the 29th and it's the master illuminator number 11 and it's also that two energy of partnerships. But what I didn't mention yet is that the entire date adds up to 17, and 1 plus 7 is 8. So it's a, a day of abundance, that double four, double structure. It's abundance, and the card of the day that I got is the Ace of Pentacles. So this is a perfect day, perfect day to work on abundance in your life, especially around finances and career and business. And there's a, you know, that new opportunity. That's what Aces are. Uh, and you can go out there and, you know, this is the day to work on that new business. You know, like we were just talking to Donna, you know, may, maybe you need to, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're 57 years old. You have a lifetime of experience. Maybe you need to see, okay, how can I create value for somebody else and then create a business around that? So this is the perfect day for Donna and for everybody listening out there to do that. So uh, what I was uh, saying earlier was, uh, do you want to set this up because um, yes. we need to let people yes. – people don't even know what we're talking about. And well, so let me there was tell you. Articles. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's been in the news for, you know, about a, about a month now or so. Um, and basically what it is, there was this mysterious repeating radio signal from space that uh, was revealed last year is now the source galaxy and the location's not like any of the other ones that they've seen. Um, so astronomers, uh, astrophysicists, they're, they're going to have to rethink what they thought they knew about these weird signals that we hear occasionally from space. And what's really interesting is that this is repeating and they've traced it back to a spiral galaxy located 500 million light years from earth 
making it the closest known source of one of these fast radio bursts that we've had. And it's emanating specifically from a region just seven light years across, and a region that's alive with star formations. There's a lot going on in that galaxy. And they really don't understand it. And what's really weird is it's got this six day repeating cycle so it'll it'll be repeating for four days and then it'll go quiet for 12 and then back to four days in a row and then quiet for 12 and so that's really strange right because we usually think okay pulsars uh, all these things going on in space are usually what you know these signals we we assume are the are the source of these signals but to have it repeating like that like clockwork man that makes you wonder like how does that happen is there not maybe some intelligence behind that i don't know do you know I we're going to do know. a psychic in and find out <laughs> all right see what we can find out about it so it's really interesting well, we get- it's very unique unusual I mean, we receive radio signals all the time because there's just the background radiation of the entire universe, and you you get the these uh, signals that are generated from the background radiation. Then you've got the pulsars, you know, uh, but not this type of thing. You know, it's yeah. it's so it it's so different. It's so different. Uh, the the so we can. You know, do a, a psychic spin on that. Pull some cards. See, you know, is there significance to it? Is it from a, uh, you know, an intelligent source and so forth? The thing about these signals, though, it's like you know a lot of the movies that have included something like this, like um, uh, Contact or, um, gosh, what's oh, the other contact. one? Contact. That's a good example. Uh, there, there, there was a, a bunch of different movies like that. You know, Independence that, that had, Day. <laughs> yeah. Independence but Day. They, remember that. Independence Day. Yep, yep. Signals from space. You know, but the thing is, it's not. It's not just the fact that it has a cycle to it, but these signals had encoded information, and and that's yeah. the thing that I'm that we're not seeing. We're not seeing anything with encoded, you know. Uh, advanced mathematics or something that at least that's discernible at this point, you know, so that, that makes me wonder, you know, it's like, okay, so a repeating signal. Yeah. So what, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a pulsar that, that goes behind uh, a whole cloud of planets uh, every 16 days and then comes back out again. I don't know. It could, it, it could be something else. Yeah, I mean, it could totally, it doesn't, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens, but, you know, <laughs> no, I, you know, what I think is interesting, too, is it's coming from a spiral galaxy, so it seems to me, you know, there's so many cycles that happen in our spiral galaxy that maybe, mm-hmm. you know, it's something due to the nature of that particular galaxy. Who knows? But should we pull some cards on it and see what, what is it that, that we can find out what do we need sure. to know about this repeating signal? Okay. Let's take a look here. Oh, interestingly enough, the, my card of the day, the Ace of uh, Pentacles, shows up mm-hmm. in this reading. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, yes. And, and oh my God, it. Okay, this is so weird because the, you got the Ace of Coins, and so you know uh, Ace of Pentacles, sometimes called the Ace of Coins. <clears throat> so you think of a coin, and you think of, hey, it's a toss-up. It could go either way, and that's literally what's going on here. As I look at it as a as a yes/no spread, I got three yes. Uh, sorry, I got two yeses, two nos, and then the Ace of Coins, which is literally the toss-up card. As I've mentioned on the show before in my, my method of reading on the radio shows, um, that it, the ace cards are literally a one card, and odds are taken as a no. However, the aces, you know, the essence of what an ace is and it being a new opportunity and, and a very positive card 
uh, can go either way. It could be a yes or it could be a no. And then the other four cards are evenly yes, no. So I'm not getting a strong yes or a strong no. Is there significance to this radio signal? Um, is it from intelligent life? You know, I'm just not getting that. I'm just not getting that. Uh, however, you know, there's some clues in here. One of the cards I got that was a yes card is actually the Two of Cups. <gasps> and when you look at the traditional Wait Smith version, it's two individuals come, you know, moving towards each other and coming together, meeting. You know, so is this an opportunity to meet somebody mm. else out there besides us? Mm. I don't know. Well, what are you getting in your cards? I also got the two of cups. Which is wild. <laughs> You're kidding me. I love yeah. when we get the synchronicity. <laughs> I got the two of cups, and I also got the justice card, and I also got the mm-hmm. high priestess. So there's a lot about there's a lot of duality that is with all three of those cards to me. You know, um, the the justice card is into well, see, and there you go. There's another example of that kind of balance, another duality balance. kind of thing. Duality, and the, thing, yeah. The, you know, when I first looked at the justice card, it made me think of cause and effect. You know, so I do think that there's a, you know, there's obviously like a cause for it, you know, and the effect is this burst repeating and repeating. The two of cups to me, I thought maybe this is caused by the interaction, you know, of 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 two, um, two different bodies, maybe, you know, like planetary bodies or you know something causing that. But what's really interesting is the nine of swords comes up in the in the center of everything. So I feel like, you know, it's saying like, okay, you know, we don't lose sleep over this. Like, you know, keep it in check, keep that balance. Um, the high priest is coming up first to me in the past position is like saying like somebody's already got kind of an inkling about this, and we end with the king of pentacles. And so to me, what that's saying mm. is, like, we very me- well may end up having an answer to this. The other mm-hmm. thing about the King of Pentacles to me is, is being the final outcome is a sort of idea of, <laughs> it's so funny, you know, in the Voyager deck, the King of Pentacles is called the Man of Worlds. And so mm. <laughs> I don't know there why, but I just... I was just like, uh oh, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I I do get the feeling that somebody already, you know, has a has an inkling of what this is, and if they follow their intuition, and that may very well be an astronomer working on this. There's astronomers that um, specialize in fast radio bursts. That could be it. But I think we're going to have an answer, and I think we need to just, you know, kind of, you know, keep it in check, not fall into. Um, conspiracy theories yet or freak out, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's, I think it's fascinating, but I think this is a cause and effect thing caused by the interaction of two different bodies. So maybe a moon of a planet in that spiral galaxy, 500 light years away. Um, But it would be great if we end up meeting someone. (laughs) Right, and you know, getting the two of cups, I think that's a strong indication of that as a possibility. And then, you know, my ace of coins, that's a new opportunity. And my yeah. central focus card is actually the nine of wands, which suggests to me that we're ready. Mm. We're ready for first contact now. You know, we've oh, been building so up ready. to this for a long time. Yeah. You know, I'm I mean, ready. ever since. Uh, Wait, who who did the the first story of going to the moon? Was it Jules Verne, or um, oh God? I mean, you know, contemplation of you know going to space and and all. We've been all thinking about it a long time. Yeah, it's you know it's we are well over a hundred years, and we've been speculating you know all through the, the especially starting with the um, middle of the you know, the 20th century and, you know, you had the war of the world's uh, radio broadcast and <laughs> they thought we actually were being 
invaded, you know, and uh, and then of course all the science fiction that's come since then for, you know, fifty oh, yeah. seventy years, of, you know, and uh, uh, so much about that, you know, so much that it's really we're prepared now. I mean, you know, I mean, if an alien beams down in front of almost anybody's house it's not going to be a big deal like it would have been a hundred years ago. It's going to be like, Oh, hi, I'm George. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> you know, welcome to my part of the oh, galaxy. You know, exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah. you and know, that's what and the cards are suggesting. yeah. And I, and I think, you know, that, that idea of like balance and, um, you know, it seems to be such a prominent thing in the cards I got. I and mean, then you said you got the temperance card as well. So, you know, this could be, you know, uh, just the beginning of an opportunity that helps, like, kind of, you know, create a balance between us. Because, I, because to me, the idea that we're we're living here thinking we're the only ones in the entire cosmos and the entire universe and even in our entire galaxy I think is really Mm. one-sided you know and so we need that balance to know that there's others you know we really do because we get kind of carried away being the the only ones I think right right so there you go folks the psychic spin segment of the show mysterious signals from deep space and uh, we were able to put our psychic spin on that all righty, so uh, give us a call, 714-816-4628. If you've been sitting on the fence, listening live, and wondering if you should call in, uh, this is the time to do that because we're going to be going to phone calls shortly. 714-816-4628. Don't forget to press 1 on your dial pad. Press 1. If you're Skyping in, open your Skype app, open the dial pad, press 1. That way it puts you into the caller queue. And we take the calls in the order that they come in. Before we go there, though, I want to let everyone know about some of the shows coming up the rest of this week. Of course, tomorrow's Sunday, but uh, the Angelic Realm show is on hiatus. And the next show on Sunday is going to be Sharona Rapsik's uh, Magic Universe, and that'll be the following Sunday, next Sunday, so March 8th. And her special guest will be none other than the fabulous Mary Brown. That's right. (laughs) Ta-da! Mary's going to be her guest next Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But we do have a a live show on Monday, and it's Compassionate Light with Catherine Hahn. And uh, she's welcoming us to March. Hello, March. So tune in and... She's going to have the energy of the month and take your phone calls. And then I'll be back on Friday with Dr. Rose. Uh, We're taking your phone calls and open lines and readings. Plus, we're going to be talking about why you need a life coach. Dr. Rose and I are both certified life coaches, and we'll be chatting about that. And then Saturday, March 7th, we're already into March here. Oh, my God. The premiere episode of There's a Rock for That. With Mary Brown. It's actually a, a, re, a relaunch because Mary had yeah. a show of the same name for years. Yes. And uh, so all you crystal keepers and rock hounds, you're going to want to tune in for Mary's first show, Saturday, March 7th. There's a rock for that. And you'll be introducing the show, explaining what it's all about. Uh, what are you going to talk about on yes. the show on the premiere? On the premiere, just going to kind of talk about, you know, why why it's coming back and how excited I am and kind of what people can expect. And, yeah, it is also a live call-in show, so people are welcome to call in for free mini readings or to talk about stones, crystals, rocks, uh, any questions that you might have. I will try to answer them, and if if I don't, have an answer for you right away I will track one down because that's the thing that I love about doing a show about stones and crystals is like oh you know the 
an immense amount of uh, information that's out there. And so any crystal question, I feel like there is an answer. We can find the answer. <laughs> I don't know it right away, but, yeah, I'm really excited right. about it. And the thing that's kind of different is that the mini readings I'm going to be doing um, using crystals, doing crystal divination. You know, I have a set of crystal oh, dice. yeah. And uh, also, uh, you know, crystal cards and stuff. So it'll be like a chance to get kind of a different kind of reading. Something different. Yeah, absolutely. And that is uh, Mary's monthly radio show. So it's the first Saturday of every month will be There's a Rock for that. And, of course, she had a monthly show. But, you know, um, our Saturday show here was, with Psychic Saturdays, and with the 10th anniversary of our first ever radio show, we thought it was apropos to uh, rename the Saturday show Tarot Today Radio, go back to our original title of our very first show, Tarot Today. And it, so it makes perfect sense that, you know, going back to um, – there's a rock for that too. And uh, yeah. I look forward to hearing you chat all about that and and, you know – how and when you came to the conclusion you were going to bring that back and, and uh, you know, what people can expect on the show. Can't wait for next Saturday. Me either. Awesome sauce. And, uh, you know, if you're new to the show, uh, new to the network, remember you can find all the upcoming shows at psychitalk.net slash upcoming. There you go. And, oh, Hi, y'all. Charlotte Kornberg, she just popped into the chat room. Bob's in there. Reenie's in there. Mary. Hi, everybody. Uh, we, remember, we're in, the ch- we're in the chat room, too, thetarotguild.com forward slash chat. So if you ask for a mini reading in the chat room, we'll be happy to read that on air and do it live for you on air. But we'd rather chat with you on the phone. And we got a bunch of people waiting. You ready to go to the phone lines, Mary? Yes. Okay, going back to the phone lines, let's see who's out there. Caller, what's your name? Where are you hey. calling from? Hello, hello. Good day. Good day. It's Bob from the Whitsunday Islands. Oh, hi, Bob. Oh, my God, it's been a long time. How you been? Um, yeah, hey. my life is awesome. My, my, my life is Happy absolutely awesome. Happy 2020. Yeah. Happy Leaf yeah. Day. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've been leaping around in all the puddles. We've had so much rain up here in Queensland, and it's it's just awesome because it comes down in uh, lumps the size of your thumb, and it and that it's warm, lumpy rain. So I've been out there with my bar of soap, just dancing in the rain. <laughs> oh, wonderful! <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So I'm up for a reading. Excellent. Anything you want a reading on in particular? Uh, uh, relationships, love life, that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Love life. I've been on my own too long. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? Okay. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> where, mm. where is the partner for Bob out there? Jack, should you go first? Should I go first? I can never remember who's on first. I went first last <laughs> time, so you, you get to go first this okay. time. Cool. Well, I'm going to use my Love Notes Oracle because it's all about the love, and let's just see what comes up for Bob on Love Life. Looking at that, look with love. It ate. Ooh. Okay, so this is really, oh, my gosh, Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. Wow. This is good. Well, look, you know, because it's these funny little cards, this little oracle deck here. And so the first thing that comes out is this message that love is coming. So love's coming, Bob. And then... And it says, like, part part of how, you know, you connect with this person is to look with love. You know, when you're out and about and around people and stuff, you know, put those 
put the love visor over your eyes, you know, your your imaginary love visor, and just kind of scan around and see where the love is. Also, the number eight is significant. So that's interesting. That could indicate August. It could be talking about the eighth of a month. It could be saying eight months from now, eight weeks from now, but something connected to the number eight with this. But, hey, I think that that's pretty interesting because not always – when I pull these love cards, is it you know usually it's like be patient for love, wait for love, love is is on its own time. You know it's all that kind of like oh my gosh, so where's it coming? But to have love is coming, the first card that comes up kind of blows my mind. I think that that's significant. And remember the eight, and remember to put your love visors on when you're out and about, yeah. especially if it's on the eight of a day. Let's see what Dax is getting. Awesome, awesome thoughts. Oh, my God. So, like, the very first card I get is the Eight of Cups. And eight, eight is the number of abundance in numerology. It's looking really good being the very first card. And, you know, it, it's got an indication there, you know, where Cups is emotion. And the individual in this card has stacked up the cups and is moving away from the cups up a hill onward and upward has their uh, traveling cloak and their walking stick, you know, and they're moving onward and upwards and they've stacked the, the cups up. Meaning what what's going on here in this card is they taking care of the emotional baggage. And sometimes you, you know, you, you have to do that first. Really, you know, anything from past relationships and all that, you got to, you know, settle that once and for all and then, you know, move onward and upward. And then the rest of the cards are really positive. I mean, it, 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 there is a little warning about, you know, hanging on too tightly. Uh, I don't know what that's referring to specifically, but I, I got a feeling that, you know, especially if you haven't been – dating for a while, you know, that uh, we have a tendency to latch on to the first thing that comes along. <laughs> so it's a little bit a little bit of a warning there, you know, and then um, uh, some cards talking about hard work. And, you know, like it, it's, it, this whole thing is not easy, you know, and so it may re- require a little bit of work there, you know. Um However, an individual does come in, and they are a fire sign, either an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. And the very last card is the Eight of Pentacles, and uh, that that's the card about, about work, but that's another eight abundance. So notice that the entire spread that I did is bookended by the Eight of Cups in the beginning – the very first card and the very last card is the eight of pentacles, both of them being eight, the number of abundance. So that's looking really good, Mary. Uh, I had to put Bob's wow. line on hold because we were getting an echo. Let's bring Bob back on. And Are you resonating with any of this? Um, sure. Um, is that any better on the um, feedback? Yeah, um, yeah. My yeah. life, my life is amazingly abundant. It's, mm-hmm. it's how can I put it? I come to realize that what I radiate, I create, and what I've created radiates. So you know, I'm just radiating I, joy, and I feel abundant about every breath I take. And it's, you know, it's, yeah. I, I couldn't ask for more, and I'm really looking forward to. Um, yeah. Having a beautiful, beautiful partner in my life because um, I'm ready. I, you know, I, I spent 60 years getting rid of my baggage, yeah. <laughs> and I reckon I've done a pretty yeah. good job. It's so I'm ready, willing, and able. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So bring it on. Here I am. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for, for the taking call, my Bob. call. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for calling. No worries, mate. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend there. And remember, there might be a fire sign in your near future. <laughs> yeah, and that that's so weird about the eights. That's so awesome, and what a great number. That's yeah, cool. yeah, I mean, it, that that's some of the things that uh, professional tarot readers look for, uh, you know, for those listening out there that are interested. We know we, know we have a lot of uh, people that are, uh, new to tarot, you know, they they want to be tarot readers, they're budding tarot readers, and also people that have been reading for decades, too. We have both, you know. Uh, but a lot of our audience is made up of that, you know, because uh, after all, you know, we are the Tarot Guild is our, our sister organization. and um, So little tidbits like that come out on the show all the time that, you know, there's a significant thing to look for uh, is, is there a, a book ending situation where, you know, card on either side of the spread has the same number, same suit, same, you know, something like that, you know, uh, that, that's significant as well. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of abundance, all those eights. I love it. I love it. All righty. So we have a few minutes left. Let's see if we can squeeze in a, another call or two. Sounds uh, good. Who would be? Who's waiting the longest? Looks like 504. Area code 504. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Is, is that me? Yes. That, it's that you. That would be oh. you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Hi. Yes. Hello. I'm calling and, hello. Can you hear me clearly? Oh yeah. Yes, we What's can. What's your name and where What's you your calling name and from? Where... Yeah, yeah, that's what we're trying Hi, to get at. Is... is we yes. <laughs> yeah. My name is Kelly, and um, I'm calling in regards to you know how you gentleman before you saying he's radiating love and all that stuff, and that's what I've been doing light and just joy and all of that wonderfulness. But at work and other another one more place. I'm getting just the opposite back, and it's blowing my mind, and I'm letting it bother me, and I'm mm-hmm. letting it get to my me that it's not – I'm going to still radiate, but it's just blowing my mind, the irrational behavior and how it's coming back at me in a toxic way, yet it bounces off of me, but yet I'm mm-hmm. sitting here like today, it's affecting me, and I, and mm. I know better than that. Right, yeah. and if it – Anything that affects you means you you have your attention on it. If you have your attention on it, attention on it, you create intention, which creates attraction. You see, and that and that you know, even though we radiate the love we want to experience, even though we radiate uh, what it is we want to attract in, we don't have the control over other people. We only have the control over right. what we do and how we react to other people. And it's tough because we we can slip, and what happens is we're radiating what we want to attract in, but then something like this happens, and then it bothers us. Bothering us, okay? They can't make something bother you, all right? I know. That's how I know you. That. That's understand. how you are. Re- yes, that is how you. I know. Are choosing to? Re- Let me finish, ma'am. That is how you are choosing to react to the situation and what it sets up is a domino effect and a, and a cyclical effect because you are choosing to react this way. And because you're letting it bother you, bothering implies attention, putting your attention on it. Anything we put our attention on, we create an intention, and then we draw it in via the law of attraction. So you draw more of that the more you worry about it, the more you think about it, the more you're bothered by it. And it's, it's not easy to control these thoughts, okay? But there are a lot of techniques and, 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 and systems and things that you can use. Uh, you could do uh, Google search uh, or YouTube is best, you know, search on YouTube and and you can learn all kinds of techniques. Emotional freedom techniques is, is perfect for tapping away these negative charges so you can get back to radiating what you want to attract in. 
Okay. So I just wanted I to put that right. out there and, and and not just for you, but remember there's there's thousands of people listening and they're in the same situation, Kelly. And right. a lot of us don't realize that we're reacting and attracting. Hmm. Okay. And Kelly, um I actually drew a crystal for you. Okay. Nice. And you can either, you know, use this crystal and get a crystal in, of this and, and work with it or, or just mm-hmm. think about the message of the crystal. And the crystal is Larimar, L-A-R-I-M-A-R. Ooh. It's a beautiful blue stone associated with the throat chakra, right? So that helps with mm-hmm. our being able to express our truth and stuff. But really the gift of Larimar is this like sense of peace and tranquility and it's very connected to the element of water. So I don't know if you live mm-hmm. by the water. It's kind of cold mm-hmm. right now to, you know, to go to the beach oh. or anything. But I feel <laughs> like maybe, you know, starting to do some nice, like, you know, self-care with water, a nice bath or, a, you know, a nice steam or something that's going to help you kind of, you know, release the tension from the other noise. The other thing that comes up to me is is also this, that oh, uh, when you radiate that light and that joy and that love, you can easily encounter other people blockages when it comes to their light and their love and their joy. And so there can be friction and really that, often does lead to healing for them. You may never, ever realize the way that you shining your light and radiating that love and that joy, you don't know how many people around you that you're healing, even if they can't find a way to express it in a loving way, you know. So just something to keep in mind, okay? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, may I tell you something? Um, Yes. That... Absolutely. I, I do work on it every day. I don't try to w- react out in public. It's all internal. I soak in hot bath and meditate almost every day. I meditate two or three times a day. But, um, awesome. but, but soaking in the hot along with doing exercises in there, along with doing meditation, including all kinds of things, including the Honopono. I'm so sorry. Good. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I have white angel oil that I put on both wrists every morning, my sh- my throat chakra and my third eye saying no negative energy shall penetrate uh, me no. or will affect me. You know, I do this Perfect. every single day. I have salt and crystals around my desk. Love it. Love it. You know, and so yeah. look, you're working your light, you know, you are. And look, we, we have a, we have a world of hurt out there. And the mm-hmm. people that are willing to work their light, yeah, you're you're going to be running into um, those elements out there that are so starved for that. But mm-hmm. I don't want to lose my that. job over this. They've turned. I mean, it's just that gaslighting thing. And I just don't mm-hmm. know if I'm going to just lose my job over this. It's gotten so toxic. And the young ones want me out so badly. And it sounds like I'm a little baby crying. And I even... Just don't like even discussing it because it sounds so petty because nobody's experiencing it, you know what I mean, in that office yeah. but me. Mm. You know, they've taken all my my my, my tasks away, um, mm. but, it, oh, my God, it's insane. I mean, I laugh at it in a dark way because it's just so insane. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Oh. Well, Definitely. you know, you can't. Well. You keep taking care of yourself. You keep shining your light, you know. And, you know, I, I really, you know, things yeah. are going to happen the way that they're that they're going to happen. But at least you know that where you're coming from is a very good place. And okay. that's not something to change. But at the same time, be prepared for changes like that. If you really feel intuitively that, you know, your job's going to end up going the way by the wayside, then, you know, then you have some time to start, you know, preparing for that, to think of other solutions, other opportunities that may be awaiting you. 
Great you know, blessing. Nobody's got a card or pull, pulling the car or another card or. <laughs> oh, on on what on the job? Uh, yeah, I mean, what, am I going to still be there? Are You're these gonna people going to still attack me? You know, I I don't know. Mm. I'm just not in a good place today, so I'm, usually I'm really in a good mood, but today it just let me yeah. I let it bother me, and it and it bothers me yeah. that it bothers me, which is just a rabbit hole that I'm getting out of today. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> we go down that go down that rabbit hole. You know what's interesting is I get the fool card that comes up that says anything could happen, so I wouldn't write everybody off immediately or or assume, you know, that that it's going to go by the wayside. Um, and the other thing that's coming up is the temperance card. Mm-hmm. Temperance, you know, mm-hmm. find that, mm-hmm. find that middle way, find your right. center in the midst of all of it. But um, right. as far, you know, the other card I got was the Ten of Pentacles. There's, a, there's like no cards to me except for the Fool card indicating like, hey, anything could happen with the Fool card, <laughs> you know. But it also mm-hmm. represents. <laughs> new beginnings, new opportunities, but I'm not getting any cards that are saying like, ah, you know, if she's getting the ax, you know, so I, I mm-hmm. don't, I don't feel like that's something that may happen immediately. You know what I mean? If in fact it does, mm-hmm. but I feel like that openness of the fool, the being willing to, to take the leap and, you know, the, that idea of like, Hey, you know, are you really where you want to be despite all of those people? You know, would that still be your ideal situation if things were different? Or is there something that you, you know, haven't taken the leap of faith and, and ventured out into that maybe you've wanted to and it's been in the back of your mind? I would think about, you know, those kind of things. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks for the call, Kelly. And, you know, I was just, letting you run with that, Mary, because you were doing <laughs> such a fabulous job, you know. Um, I just went on and on. As you, <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> and, but as you were talking to Kelly, you know, I mean, I pulled some cards and I got the five of wands, you know, the the rivalry, the situation, the yeah. competitiveness, the thing, it, it's not going to go away, all right? Mm-hmm. And But the cards that I got with it are the King of Cups and, and the Knight of Swords. The King of Cups is the most emotionally stable, balanced, and rock solid uh, of the cards, and that King of Cups, you know, and so it, it's yeah. adopting that energy along with the Knight of Swords. You know, swords are thoughts and ideas, uh, and the Knight of Swords is literally the archetypal um, warrior, so it's like becoming a warrior of thought controlling your own thoughts and reactions to Mm. um, the situation. So it's like you don't have control over what they're going to do. It's going to continue. The only thing that, you know, uh, that you can do is become a warrior of thought, you know, develop those skills and uh, techniques and modalities and things to help you maintain the King of Cups uh, energy, maintain that uh, emotional stability. Not, uh, you, you know, in the traditional Waite Smith version of the card, the king is sitting on like a stone throne. It's very solid. Nothing's moving. And then there's water all around him, and the water is turbulent, and, it's, and, it's, and there's, there's fish and ships. And I mean, just all kinds of things, you know, <laughs> being thrown around, and every, you know, there, there's there's craziness all around him with this, you know, the rough waters and seas, and but he's calm, and and rock solid and focused, and you know, just sitting there on this solid throne, you know, and that's the that's the situation that Kelly finds herself in with this chaos going on, and she needs to be. The Knight of Cups. Yeah. Yeah. So true. That's right. So, um, do we have time for one more call? Yeah, why not? 
Okay, we're at the end of the show here, so if we don't get to your call today, remember uh, you call in on Monday for Catherine's show. I'll be back on Friday with Dr. Rose, and Mary will be here next Saturday with her brand new show. There's a rock for that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, way back when you, you create that show, everybody was running around going, well, you know, there's an app for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and so Mary said, hey, did you know there's a rock for everything too? Rock for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where and that there comes is. From. There is and a there rock is a, for there is a everything. A crystal or a mineral or something, you know. Oh my god. Let's see. Who's been waiting the longest? It looks like area code nine two nine. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Hi, Hello. Hello. My name is I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York. I didn't catch that at all. Brooklyn, New York. He's Anna. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And, and can you say your name a little louder? I can't quite make your name out. Savannah. Savannah. C-E-Z-O-N-A. Savannah. 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 Yes. Savannah. Savannah. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. Cool. I think there was a, there was a T like that. <laughs> the Savannah T. <laughs> so what's Love going it. on with you today? Happy Leap Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know. I've got so much going on. All right, I want to ask about. Um, I want to be a writer. Like I knew this my whole life. I'm 28 years old, and it's like every two years I'm having a child. <laughs> I'm almost five mm. months pregnant. I have a two year old. Well, he'll be two in May, and then I have a daughter. She'll be five in October. And I do ask, like right now, they're sleeping. I, like, would it be any success in me writing? I want to write a book about things I've been through, and I also want to do, like, a children's book, like, because I read to them, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, as I'm reading them, I'm like, I can, you know, make up my own little stories. So would it, could you see any success in that? Any success in being a writer? Yes. <clears throat> Awesome. And, you know, I did want to throw out there, it seems like, you know, uh, like with your kids and their ages and, and the whole dynamic, it's like every three years thing, you know, three is the number of creativity and communication. And it just looks like you're, you're you know, living through those kind of cycles because you are such a creative person, you know. And the cards tell me to, hey, go for it, you know, follow your passion, the Knight of wands, you know, I mean – Literally following your passion, you know, and it can it can end up really good because the very last card is the Ten of Pentacles, and that's that you know really positive abundant card, financial stability and um, you know great family life too and things things along those lines. Now, in between, however, there's a ton of work, a ton of work. Um, yeah. I typically I, I typically like to take the caller's exact question, you, you, especially when they do like a yes or no, which you did, and just ask yes or no. And so I asked yes or no, and I got the ever-present uh, maybe, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, can this happen? Can this be uh, – uh, uh, successful and, and and so forth and you know it, it's it, it could go either way right now and you know when I don't get a strong answer when I don't get a strong like four out of five yes cards or five out of five yes cards when I get you know two or three yes cards that's telling me that hey there's more to be done in order for the momentum uh, to point at an outcome that's really, really positive. That's what it's telling me. I'm getting a lot of five no, cards, a lot of cards about rivalry, and it, there's stiff competition in writing and so forth. But if you really want it to happen, you can make it happen. The people that are successful uh, realize that, number one, they realize that they have the power and the only major arcana card showing up here is the magician card, which is literally about that. 
<laughs> Mastery he of, said the, 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 of the magician, the magician card. card. Yes. Yes, manifesting the the mastery of the material world, creativity and originality, using your willpower and self confidence. So, yeah, it's I'm a combination of, of <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a, 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 a realization that you know um, you need to in order for this to happen, you have to realize your own power. Develop your self-confidence. Develop your craft. Allow your cre- creativity and originality to come out because that's what's successful is original. You can have a thousand people writing on the same topic, but you know if, if somebody creates something original. And then the, the Knight of Wands, again, following your passion, sticking with it, going for it. That's how you're going to be successful. What are you getting, Mary? Well, the cards I get, I think, are really interesting. The judgment card with the Ace of Pentacles, I feel like it's saying, like, you do have a gift for this, okay? But, look, it's going to take balance. We have the Justice card saying, like, okay, like, the way forward with this is to to take it away from being a fantasy and to roll our sleeves up and get to work every day, every day. Set yourself a schedule. Make sure you have balance. You've got kids. I know what it's like. <laughs> it's hard to like, you know, kind of keep our balance sometimes with, you know, uh, with with kids. But look, you know, I I feel that, you know, if you figure out a way to just set aside a little bit of time, I've got the Knight of Pentacles that comes up here in the center. So it's like slow and steady is going to win the race. Just start, you know, making yourself like a plan. It's like, okay, you know, every, even if it's only one day a week, if you can't do every day, if you can't set aside an hour to just write, write down your ideas, write down whatever comes to mind, any little bits of stories, and then you can kind of go back and rework those. So, yeah, I I think you have a gift for this. I think you can be successful doing this, but we've got to roll our sleeves up and and get down to business. Yeah, I, I I get it. I agree. I definitely agree. Awesome. Even with the kids, like like right now they're sleeping. They've been sleeping for like two hours. I could have been writing, and I'm just like on Facebook yeah. and <laughs> listening to the show, and I could have been writing. But also, well, it, I have exactly. coming in both hands. Like I play a part on me, like not writing as much as I used to. Like when I was one place, so I I wrote more. Like I wrote like poems. But, like, right. it's like, you know, as you get older, teenagers and everything, going through so much stuff, I just, like, it's, like, in my head, but it's, like, I'm not grabbing no pen and no paper, but I'm thinking about this all the time, at all the time, every time I read a book, yeah. every time I read a book, my whole homework, if they're watching and cartoons, like, I'm always thinking of it, but I'm never, ever writing anything. Start carrying a journal. It's a little note book, you know, or, uh, you know, one of those like, uh, you know, subject uh, notebooks that you can get for like, you know, a dollar and just have one handy, put put one of those cheap little notebooks in every single room. Like, believe me, I, I'm a writer. I've got boxes and boxes of, of notebooks that I just, you know, wrote here, wrote there. I kept a notebook in every room of my house. I always had one in my purse. You just write that right down on a napkin. It's better Notebooks are better than napkins, I can tell you that much. <laughs> you know, like napkins get crumbled up, you blow your nose, and there goes your masterpiece, you know. Um, but, but, yeah, it, it's just like have it handy instead of like, you know, you could have the greatest story in your head, but nobody's going to get to read it unless you put that pen to paper. And, you know, or you can use a computer, but some for some people the process of like writing it yeah, out – Better, yeah. Make the flow. Because of the coffee panel, I should just like, you know, make voice notes, and I'm just like, no, I'm gonna write it. Like, you know, I'm in pain. I yeah. And get back to like, like, I like writing. It's just like, a good yeah. old do a lot. <laughs> just also, uh, you know, come on, you, you can do it. Just, just do it. Like the old Nike, you know, commercials. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> 
Well, yes. Said, Make a oh, promise to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, awesome. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. That was but also, you awesome. said to put a book in every room, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I like a little notebook. But no, yeah. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. But I live in, we're in the shelter. I live in a hotel room. Well, could you then that'll be that more simple. Any... Just, <laughs> that's more simple. Yeah. Do you see us just getting out of here? Anything? Like, well, if I'm going to still be here when I have the baby? Like, we've been here for 21 months. Like, my son was here between with me. We, I came in this hotel. I was eight months pregnant. Like, will I stay wow. here oh my like, God. when I have the new baby? And before that, I was in a domestic violence shelter for, like, three and a half, four months. And then I got discharged from there because I stayed out too late. And then, they, you know, mm. they switched. Um, yeah. I had to go back to the base. Then they switched me here. And I've been here ever since. But I've seen... 11 apartments, and it's just like either they take another client or they take a, I have a voucher, they take a cash client or they take someone else. So, like, I don't know for these, just humans, uh, 12 apartments is like, you know, it's still hope. Like, I know I have to, I'm going to get out, but would I have the new baby in here? Because that would be drastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I think that plays a part in me not writing these. Like, even though I feel like this would be the time. This should have these last two years. I should have been like writing like crazy, really. But I just was so like everything is. I just want to get out. I just want to get out. And I was, it's very depressing. On top of still trying to be strong for the kids and their dad, he's not much help. But he's he's right. depressed and stressed. And his living situation isn't, you know, the best either. <laughs> But, like, I really right. do not want to have this baby in this room. <laughs> I mean, if, I, if, you know, that happens, right. I deal with it. But do you see me out of here before the baby's born, or? Hmm. Dax, did you want to pull some cards on that? I hope. Uh, on, honestly, Mary, uh, you know, we're really out of time here. I literally put okay. the tarot deck away because, you know, it, it's usually one question per caller and, this is our last okay. caller. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. But, you know, you could, you know, feel free to call back in and, and there's, you know, so so many other opportunities during the week to call in on shows, you know, uh, Monday we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back. I'm sorry. On Friday, Mary will be back on next Saturday, you know, but yeah, we got a real, so it's the same show, same but, number. Same it's phone same number, number same different time. show. <laughs> different shows, yeah. Different shows. Oh, okay. But um yep. so, thank you so much. That was cool. like that was like great. I'll probably I'm gonna try and start today. <laughs> Tonight. Uh, so thanks so much thank for you calling so much. and definitely no call back in and we'll take a look at those other things for you. I will, thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Awesome. So that was a lot of fun. Great calls and the topic and just everything. I love the the yeah. leap information. Yeah. It's leap day. Woo-hoo. Leap day. Leap day. And uh, I can't wait for your show next Saturday. And I understand you've got um, uh, new, really cool intro and outro music for your show, and that's going to premiere as well. And Oh yeah, my my son Dominic was incredibly generous with his own original music, letting me use a little bit of that from the intro and outro to my show. Luckily, he doesn't charge me royalties. <laughs> yeah. But I just I'm such a big fan of his music anyway, so it's like I'm like, can I just borrow a little bit of your music <laughs> for my radio show? So he's pretty cool <laughs> to his old Bob. I can't wait to hear that next week, let me tell you. And thanks to all of our callers and listeners. We don't have a show without you. And thank you, Mary, for being here. Well, thank you, Dax. And thanks to everybody who called in and who's listening out there and in the chat room. Happy Leap Day, Mm -hmm. everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. (laughs) 
Bye, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I'll see you on Friday. Bye, everyone. Good night, John Boy. Bye, Dad.